The city of Morgantown has joined the city of Wellsburg in banning Marcellus Shale gas drilling within city limits. Both communities are concerned about the safety of their drinking water supplies. Researchers at West Virginia University are working on making horizontal drilling to extract natural gas safer and more predictable. Here's Rich Carter with tonight's Mountain State Science. In a large portion of the U.S., there are shale formations with natural gas trapped inside. Extracting the gas from these sites, called shale plays, has not been easy. But for over the last decade, the Barnett Shale Play in Texas has been producing gas. The experience gained from developing the Barnett Shale is coming to bear on the Marcellus Shale. This vast deposit reaches from Pennsylvania into New York, Ohio, and West Virginia. At West Virginia University, the Department of Petroleum and Natural Gas Engineering is working to improve the efficiency of Marcellus shale gas recovery. Professor Samuel Amory is chairman of the department. The Barnett Shale was an inspiration to looking at Marcellus shale. Marcellus shale has been there for many, many, many years. We knew all about Marcellus shale, but we did not have the technology to deal with Marcellus shale. The technology started with Barnett shale. Marcellus shale is new to us, and uh, some of the questions can be answered through modeling and through uh, uh, doing research and some of it we have done here. Dr. Shahab Mohage, a professor in WVU's Department of Petroleum and Natural Gas Engineering, is leading a team of researchers in applying the latest technology to reservoir modeling. Mohage is considered a pioneer in the application of artificial intelligence and data mining in the industry. When, when we talk about drilling, usually you go uh, vertically down until you get very close to the formation that you as your target. And at that point, you make a turn, essentially, at the end, and ends up being a 90-degree uh, turn, and you go into the formation and you drill horizontally. If, if you drill vertically through that formation, let's say a formation is a 100 th uh, feet thick, and if you drill vertically through that, you are in contact with the formation only for that 100 foot, right? But if you drill horizontally, really there is no limit of how much you can uh, contact you can make with the formation. And obviously the more contact you make with the formation, the higher are your chances of producing more fluid from it. Dr. Mohage says that by making such turns, drillers can in some places stay in contact with the shale for as much as eight or 9,000 feet. What you do when you make the turn, you go and then right now I, I've heard that, 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 that they're actually casing it uh, all the way to the tip. Uh, and uh, when, when it comes to the point that you want to do the hydraulic fracturing, you isolate certain part of the, uh, uh, your, your well and you pump uh, the water. Uh, and with the force of that hydraulic force, you're cracking the, uh, the formation and hopefully you're connecting that crack or that, that fracture to the rest of the natural fracture that exists. Once that crack has made, if you uh, flow back the water, because of the pressure, that crack is going to close. So you need to keep that open. Dr. Mohage explains that sand is then pumped into the fracture, keeping it from closing completely and creating enough space to act as a conduit once water is removed. The gas now flows and the removed water is recycled in the next stage of fracturing. Both hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling have been around for many years. WVU's Dr. Mohage says that hydraulic fracturing has been used in hundreds of thousands of wells across the United States. Now uh, industry is capable of doing pinpoint fracking, uh, which actually uh, can go to very, very specific location and with the use of much less water, uh, they can actually uh, cut the use of water by two-thirds uh, and then go and perform the fracking and leave a lot less footprint into the formation than we did otherwise. And, and again, the, re the main reason for that to happening is, is because it's becoming very profitable to do that. And innovation usually follows the, the dollar sign and, and that's why we're having a, 
uh, a lot of innovation. And, and there are other technologies that, that, that exist, uh, such as uh, tilt meters and micro seismic, that allows us to really understand and model uh, uh, how these fract induced fractures propagate in the formation. And by m understanding that uh, well and m doing actual measurements, we are capable well of modeling it better. And this if we can model that well, then we can optimize it and go back and, and actually perform uh, much better uh, hydraulic fracks, uh, much more controlled hydraulic fractures than we did in the past. The work at West Virginia University involves what Dr. Mohage calls data-intensive modeling. In other words, uh, above and beyond first principle physics and math that we know how to do and do the conventional modeling. We now are coming up with technology that allows us to really listen to the formation, to the reservoir, to actual data, and build models that honor the actual data more than our understanding of what physics should be and could be and really is. Using this approach has made it possible to build more realistic models that have predictive capabilities. If we have that capability, therefore we can get the same amount of gas with a lot less number of wells. And the, the less number of wells we have, we're going to limit our environmental footprint while we are not going to sacrifice the amount of gas that we can get out of the, out of the ground. For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, I'm Rich Carter in Morgantown. Support for the Mountain State Science Series comes from the National Science Foundation's experimental program to stimulate competitive research, investing in West Virginia's future by building infrastructure for scientific research. On the web at wvresearch.org.